Today we're going to be extending our factoring and seeing how to factor trinomials. So what a trinomial is, it's a three-termed polynomial. So again, terms are divided up by pluses and minus signs. So I have an example here for kind of our general trinomial. And you'll notice it has an x squared, an x, and a regular term c, as in it's going to have a constant or some number. And we're going to be factoring those out. So we actually have two sets of parentheses that when we multiply them back together again, we'll still make that trinomial. So I'm going to go through an example. You have a second video going through example video example two that you see on your paper or what I have on the screen. And then I'm going to go back and show you how to actually check your work on these. Then you're going to check out some videos. And I'll post some extra examples. So after the first three that are going to be kind of led, you're going to be led through the steps pretty specifically on the first three examples. If you still need a few extra examples to check out before you try the last several on your own that are on the Desmos activity, then I'll post a secondary video checking out three more examples that show you how you deal with like the different positives and negatives that you could have in the problem. So let's look at our first example. So we are going to factor the expression x squared plus 5x minus 6. So now our first step that we're going to do is in doing this kind of box method that you're going to be working with is first put uh, identify your first and your last terms. So we've got an x squared and a negative 6. So we're going to put those in boxes 1 and 4. So we have an x squared and a negative 6. We also need to look at the coefficients of those terms. So with the negative six, it's just a negative six, that's a constant. But if you have a variable like an X or an A or any variable, what's your implied coefficient or number that multiplies it out in front? So with our X squared, our implied coefficient is a one. Now I'm not gonna write that in the box because it's not as important to write that down. And usually when we're writing these out, we keep it a little bit more you know, a little neater without writing the extra numbers in there. But we do want to go ahead and multiply our first coefficient and our last coefficient. So in this case, that means we're going to multiply 1 times negative 6, which gives us a negative 6. And then we need to brainstorm what are the different ways that I could multiply with negative 6. So this is just like when we were doing GCF thinking about all of our possible factors. And I'm going to do it in the same form where I'm going to write out my factor table instead of a factor tree splitting everything up. And so there's two ways I know that I can multiply to make a 6. I can multiply 1 times 6, and I can multiply 2 times 3. However, we've got this extra piece in here with the negatives that we need to consider. So if we're trying to make a negative 6, what's the only way you can multiply to make a negative number? Huh. So you've got to multiply one positive, one negative. So dealing with one six, I could either do negative one times positive six, or I could do positive one times negative six. Same thing with the two and three, I could do negative two times positive three, or positive two times negative three. And so our next step is figuring out which of these is going to combine to make that middle term of positive five x. So looking down through our combination, which one of these numbers can we add up? Which one of the sets of factors can we add up to make a positive five? Well, it's actually the very first one that I looked at. Negative one plus a six would give us a positive five. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use that brainstorming to break up that middle term. So that positive five X, if I write that as a negative one X and a positive six X, those two combine to make the positive 5x. And so now what I've basically done is I've turned this into almost a factor by grouping problem like we did in last lesson. And so in each column and each row, all we're going to do is look for the GCF and see what's in common between each pair of terms. So on my first one, I'm going to do the x squared and the x. So on that first row, x squared and negative 1x, well, what's in common between those two terms? Yeah, the only thing they both have is an x. So that's my GCF just for those two terms. Okay, do the same thing on the bottom row. 6x and negative 6, well, both of them have a 6. So there's my GCF. 
now I'm going to do each column. Alrighty. So, sorry about that. My display kind of shifted around, but there we go. And so now let's do our rows. So between x squared and 6x, what's in common? Well, they both have an x, so that's my GCF. And then negative 1x and negative 6, well, they don't really have any numbers in common per se, but they both do have a negative. And so when that happens, if there's nothing else in common, even if it's just a negative sign, we're actually going to use the common factor of negative 1. Because again, don't forget, the one is still a common factor between any two numbers. And so looking at these now, I can actually write out what is supposed to be in my kind of factored set of parentheses. So here we go. So let's go to green. And so each one I'm just going to put in the sets of parentheses. The way that your activity is set up is you always want to put the one with a bigger number first. So I'm actually going to put x plus six in the first set of parentheses. Again, just looking at the values that we took out as GCFs. And then in our second set of parentheses, I'm going to use an X, the X and the minus one. I used a plus six because there was no negative on there. And again, if you're unsure after looking at the next several examples of how to deal with those negatives, again, I'm going to put an extra video in between your examples. So you're actually going to see, I believe, it's going to be examples. Let me check on my file. So after you look at, I believe, examples one through four or so, then you're going to be checking out um, an extra video to help out with the signs on there. Alrighty, check out the next video for example two.